So, uh, I'll present you an initiative that uh, at the beginning it was difficult for me to name it uh, Agile Initiative. How do you recognize an Agile Initiative? How does an Agile Initiative start? Okay, come on. You have initiatives in your company. How they start? So, the bad thing to... Okay, yeah? Through a recognition that we could deliver software quickly enough. Oh, that's very good start. It's a really good start. You have a problem, business problem to solve. And this is the right start of the Agile initiative. So, in this sense, this initiative was Agile as well. But I don't like initiatives, agile initiatives that starts with massive training on Scrum, with uh, reorganizing the company in a agile way, tribes, whatever you can invent as fancy names. So in this sense, it was an agile initiative because it started with a business problem. And now let's read the title of my talk today. Dealing with dependencies and achieving smooth flow in six months. Does it sound as a business problem to solve? No. Yeah. Actually, this was the, the solution to the problem. And we'll talk about the problem in a few slides. So, uh, I worked with a software company based in Bulgaria. It's Mar the name is Smart IT. It is a software company for development and financial software. It's a, uh, it's a part of a big holding of fintech companies, and it supplied software to different companies within the holding, and actually about more than 6,500 employees were using this software in order to, uh, to deliver services. So what were the objectives? When we start working, the main problem we have to solve was the collaboration between the different departments in the team, mainly between development team and IST teams. The collaboration between them was good, but the result was that there, was, there were some delays in the deployment of already developed software. And then the subtask or additional task we added to this scope was to analyze the workflow and to find what, what were the causes of this problem. The company is very traditionally organized. It had a CTO, administration, IT operations and infrastructure. This is the department that deploys the software and the solutions. Business uh, analysis department, software development department, testing department. So it, it sounds very waterfall, and it was. And it was a successful company. It is still successful. I, I can say even more successful nowadays. So how many of your organizations are organized in this way? OK. And uh, when you look at this structure, you say, okay, it's not very agile, and it's not. When we talk to the, uh, with the management, uh, fortunately, their idea was not, let's re-engineer this company. Let's, put, let's create multidisciplinary teams, and then they will be agile. Again, we had to solve a very particular business problem that was cooperation between the different departments and how they can deliver value. Uh, we were working with the departments and with the managers in a series of workshops in which we uh, agreed on this uh, diagram as the company. The idea is like this. We have business analysts. They received requests. Requests are uh, new new work that should be done, and it should be above 24 hour, man hours at least. So it should be quite something. Then we have compliance. These are requests with a fixed date. 
they should be competed by certain day because the financial industry, this is non-banking financial in, uh, company, but they have this kind of deadlines that are regulatory. They cannot afford to, uh, to miss the deadline because they will be fined. They will, be, they, will have, uh, they will have to pay a penalty for this. These were the, uh, the services with the highest possible priority, especially when you, uh, when you approach the deadline. Normally, when it is two years, like GDPR, when you have two years, you say, ah, come on, it's not now to start. But when the, the year, the, 20, uh, the 200, uh, 2018 starts, you say, come on, I have to do this. So these are type of uh, services you have to deliver. And processing is something small. You, you need to, uh, to enhance the current functionality, or you have to, uh, you have to, uh, to deal with some uh, errors, with some bugs inside. Also, as in every company, you have bug fixing that comes directly to the development. If it is a bug that requires uh, a business analysis, it will come here. But normally, development bugs come here. And IT support tasks. How does it work? Business analysts uh, do their job. Uh, they uh, transition their work to the development and testers. They uh, prepare the solution. Then, together, developments and ICT deploy the solution. And this type of solutions, they require really close work between ICT and dev. Unfortunately, there was uh, uh, in the process this link between the business analysis and ICT, but it did not work. So what happened there was that when the solution is done, or development is done, it, sh it should be deployed, and then they understand that some additional requirements come from the deployment, or some errors come. So you have these internal iterations that uh, lose times, they create stress in both teams, and at the end they delay the, so the solution. And then you have another iteration, another round of iterations that comes when you deliver to the customer. Customer receives the solution and says, Come on, yes, we, we really wanted this when we provided the requirement, but now we want something more. Or it was not exactly what we, uh, we, ha we had into our minds when we uh, talked to your business analyst. Does it happen in the reality? Yes, it is. It's normal, but many iterations is not normal. Uh, one of the problems was that uh, the companies uh, in the, uh, the clients were growing and the demand to this company was growing. And the company is not small. It is, uh, at the moment, it's about 120 people. And when the demand grows, normally, where you think the bottleneck is in this scheme, based on your experience? Business analysts, can they serve the, the demand? Normally, yes. In Bulgaria, it's quite difficult to find uh, qualified developers, but it's easier to find uh, qualified business analysts. So the capacity here is not a problem. And when you have this push from the clients, business analysts, they are doing their job. And here, between the business analysts and uh, development, you see a plenty of analyzed features and requirements that are waiting for the development capacity to process, to process them. And as it always happens, the, uh, the request with highest priority, they are served quite fast. You, you work with them. But the others are put aside, and they wait. And when you process this requirement that was three, four months in the system, when you process it here, you need this iteration to deploy it because ICT is not aware what is coming. And then when you deliver to the customer, there is high probability that it is not fit for purpose. Things were changing. In some cases, your client found some shortcuts to solve this problem. So that was a problem. How 
and that was the work in progress that was growing here. Uh, okay, the team. This was the scheme for the whole company. We were working with many teams, and we recognized the un, uh, we recognized the unsatisfactions we have here about the uh, about the high work in progress, about the not good communication, not effective actually communication between development and ICT. And the first decision of the company that was very mechanical decision was let's decrease work in progress here. And they established a policy that every request that stayed more than three months in the queue here would be retired, of course, in, uh, in communication with the client. So at that, uh, in this time, we, we, they deleted a lot of requests here, and some of them they uh, sent back to the queue. And it was a very good mechanical uh, kind of solution. But do you think it is effective and sustainable? No. We did need some solution that will transform the system in a system that will not allow work in uh, progress here, um, accumulative work in progress. And Kanban is a such a system. So at that moment, the management of the company decided, OK, Let's do an experiment. Let's start with one team and see how does this new approach would come. Uh, during the interviews, we, uh, we discovered that there, there was a team that, uh, that started, uh, that changed its, uh, uh, its behavior, its way of working to a more agile way. Actually, it was a team that was working for one of the key clients of this company. It's Biala Carta. It means white car. It's a product that is uh, dominating the Bulgarian market, and it is also present in the Polish and Romanian markets. It's a card that is a credit card that is accessible. Almost everyone can have it in a very short uh, in a very short time without too many uh, too much bureaucracy. So it's a typical fintech non-banking product compared to the bank where you have to supply your documents, even if it is electronic way, you should supply a lot of documents. You receive this just on the post. And after that, they mitigate the risk using uh, uh, IT systems. Uh, more than 90,000 active cardholders in Bulgaria. And it's a leader in the market. And this team that was uh, 11 highly uh, motivated software development specialists uh, understood that the, their client, Biala Carta, is uh, very demanding in terms of time. They need to deliver new, fe new features uh, as soon as possible and so on. So what they did was uh, they created a comprehensive backlog using a what do you think is the first tool you use when you start a JIRA? Not JIRA. JIRA is the second. No. The f Which is the most used software tool for project management? Excel. Excel. <laughs> yeah, I saw some studies about, uh, uh, about uh, the, uh, the tools used for uh, Agile project management, and Excel was about 40, 50 percent, and it was Jira with 30, and then the other. So they, they created a very comprehensive backlog using Excel, in which they put all the requirements by the client, and they put a lot of notes. They put risk, they put uh, how do they plan to do, uh, to, to work with the ICT, what type of security it needs, and so on. Uh, OK, so uh, by purpose, we choose this team, because it was ready to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to accept agile methods. Actually, they have, rain, they have started with this, with uh, this uh, simple uh, Excel, uh, Excel tool. Where do you think 
is you when you start with the Excel in this maturity model. It's zero. Yeah, it's zero. You even do not visualize your work. But I think their uh, team values were somewhere about uh, in the level one or two, because they understood the pool system. Of course, they implemented it with a very simple tool. They understood the value of the pool system. They understood the value of the leadership. What does leadership mean? This, uh, this team, because of, uh, the, uh, of the need of a lot of communication here, I mean, all these interactions, they require communication. Of course, late communication, but communication. So the company invested a lot in uh, soft skills. They trained people in leadership. Uh, they trained people in uh, uh, negotiation skills. So uh, the company uh, was well prepared in terms of values. And uh, my conclusion after this, uh, after this uh, exercise was that actually values are very important. They're more important than the knowledge you have about the mechanics of Kanban and Agile. So there was a leadership culture. The team, uh, the team behaved as a self-organized team. There was a team lead, but it was not the team lead who was saying, you're doing this, you're doing this. Even with the Excel sheets, they were pulling. Uh, from the, uh, uh, from the uh, backlog. One of the problems there was that they tried to pull very early in the backlog who is uh, the most qualified for what. And when you put your names on the tasks in the backlog, you create what? Bottlenecks. Because you, you cannot predict what will come. So at that time, people inside the team were very specialized. I'm a front-end development, I'm a back-end developer, I'm a tester. Oh, very, so they were very specialized. But they had the freedom to self-organize for development to work. So the, the management did not uh, told them do this, this, and this. They only required that uh, the tasks are recorded in the management information system. And they had a very high motivation to, to, to not to practice waterfall. Because they, in this business, it's just not possible. In some cases, they need to deploy a new feature in a financial system in two weeks. Waterfall just does not work. So we played Get Kanban game. We discussed Kanban in a workshop. How does it work? But actually, practicing Kanban in a simulation is very helpful because they say, oh, come on, that's, that's the same what we are doing, but it is more visual. So we, play, uh, we had this short workshop. Actually, from nowadays, I think it would be better to have uh, KMP1 or some more training. But at that time, it was just a workshop and a demo about Kanban. And they said, and I told them, OK, in two weeks, we will talk again. If you want, we will do it. And they, uh, they called us, and they said, Let, let's try. So this was their first Kanban board directly on the wall. You see, these are the switches from the lights. So it's directly on the wall. And uh, we, they copied all the tasks from the comprehensive Excel backlog to sticky notes on the wall. Uh, they were afraid, actually, to abandon the, uh, the Excel sheet. And then I had to travel next two weeks, so I told them, OK, guys, let's make an experiment. Just hide the, the backlog, and in two weeks, I'll, I'll come again and we'll talk about it. So they agreed. We had a gentleman agreement that they will not use it. They will use only the labels on the wall. Uh, OK, let, let's see uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, Kanban system represents the, the, what, the, the workflow. We didn't change the workflow in the company. You see, you have expected, ready for BA, BA doing, BA, uh, uh, 
uh, BA done, uh, dev doing, dev done, QA doing, QA uh, done. Nothing different than this. So start with what you are doing now. Uh, the pro one of the problems was that uh, they didn't want to put the compliance uh, sys and uh, in expedite. You know, you played get Kanban, there is an expedite role. And normally, you, they, the developers does not, do not like it at all because it's stressful. So they, do not, they did not put uh, expedite role. What they did, these are the requests, the same requests that are in the uh, ERP system of the organization. But because they were with def very different size, they put a policy here, very initial policy. If we can complete it as a team in one week, we keep it uh, here. If not, we break down it to features that should be completed in one week. So this was the... Uh, and you see, when they are doing BI, uh, business analysis, then they break down it to features. And then they they link the, uh, the, the tasks with the uh, epic or with the bigger task by color and by the number of the task in the system. So there is a very clear link between the, uh, the, the big features and the tasks. Uh, initial idea someone wrote on the wall here blocked. So this was the initial idea for uh, block task you'll see that it was changed. And these were the support tasks, these small tasks that disturb you, that are coming whenever you, they, they come and you have to work on them. So this was the initial board. So what we have, demand, that there was a commitment point, they agreed with the client if they put it in the BA ready, they start working on it. And the policy was to, to produce it in two weeks. Uh, so this was the demand. Here you can put whatever the client wants to be done, but you do not commit on it. It's deferred commitment. We commit it when we start working on it. Uh, at that uh, time, the team decided that uh, the uh, whip limit will be represented by the surface of this, uh, uh, of this cone. You cannot put one ticket on another. We talked about this. These are new requests. These are requests that are broken down to tasks. And this is, these are processing support tasks and bugs. This was the very initial backlog on the wall. And then customer lead times, we commit here, and actually uh, we deliver here. This comb QA done actually is not only a... Uh, um, is not only uh, QA, but also they do the job for deploying here. I would rename it, but they, anyway, the team is, is using like this. So, in two weeks, the team moved their task to a cork board. They, they didn't know where is the Excel file. They didn't need the Excel file. Why? Why do you think they did not need the Excel file? It's not because they have all the information on the, on the tickets, not at that moment. Because they were discussing and they were visualizing the work, the, the, the workflow was visualized and they were discussing it in each Kanban meeting every morning in 15 minutes, but in this 15 minutes is the time to think about, is this a risky one, I'll take it, and so on. And all the Excel information at that time was in their heads. In some next iterations, it went back to the board. But at that time, 
it was not on the board. So this was the second version of the board. You see it's almost the same as the first one. Then, you're missing some information that was in the Excel file or it was not there. And this was the time, once you visualize the workflow, you have a chance to deal with your unsatisfactions. Do you remember what was the major problem we wanted to solve at the beginning? It was the cooperation between the ICT and developers. In a modern language, we name it how DevOps. <laughs> but we didn't achieve DevOps here. But. So how did they uh, solve the problem with my support? Actually, my support, in many of the cases, it was asking the right questions. I didn't work with the team to draw the board or to decide uh, what exactly to do. It was to ask questions. So, here, what uh, they decided about uh, uh, syncing with the ICT was a very simple solution. This one is, uh, are stickers, the same you see in the shops when they put uh, handwritten prices. I mean, very small orange tickets you put on the product and you write the price. So the idea here was we have this backlog of small stickers. And when the BAs, and in many cases, this were, these were the developers that understood that they would need uh, uh, extensive cooperation with the ICT in order to deploy it, they put the sticky here. And they know this feature will require synchronization with the ICT department. When they put it here, they ask the ICT department and they discuss with it what is the feature, uh, how, what they need, and so on. In many cases, the ICT department says, OK, uh, you think it's like this, but you also you need this, this, and this. So in a very early phase, they elaborate the requirements. They elicit the ICT uh, the requirements about the uh, about the, uh, the, the deployment uh, together with the ICT. And they collaborate in an early phase. So the initial idea, actually, I think I somehow proposed this marking with, they, they said we have to mark, but I proposed it with sticky notes. And my original idea was, to put the orange one when we discuss with the, with the ICT, and then to put a green one when it is resolved. Actually, the team invented a better way. I'll, I'll talk about it uh, 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 in the next slide. But this was the way to synchronize communication with the ICT team and to start early. Also, uh, you know how resistant are the developers dealing with bugs. If you have a developer that has to, that has to deal with bugs, most probably he or she will leave the company all the time. So what they decided as a policy was to put here a policy and to change the, the person who is duty on the bugs. So at that time, it was ACHO. And it does not mean that the ACHO will resolve all the bugs. ACHO will accept the bugs, will decide how urgent are they, will organize them. And if needed, ACHO can ask the team, please help me. I have more bugs than I can serve. But you see that it, these are shifts. The first week is ACHO, second week is, va second week is value, and so on. They change the the person in duty of the bugs. And all this we name in Kanban as policies. Let's see some, uh, uh, some more comprehensive policies. Uh, this was the policy dealing with the ICT. I think nowadays these are three columns. The first tick I put 
when I talk to the guys from the ICT and we elaborate the requirements. The second tick I put when I have a detailed, uh, detailed uh, requirements to the implementation. And I think now that they have a third tick when it is done. So this is a policy that helps the team to work with unsorted tasks. These are tasks that, uh, for instance, in this case, it is a feature that has to be implemented in Poland, Romania, Bulgaria. So it's the same feature, but it should be implemented in different environment. And you know that it's not just put it there. It requires some special attention. But you can first do it in Bulgaria, then in Poland, whatever, and, uh, or to test it there. So these are unsorted tasks they have to solve. These are the blockers. OK, we are uh, doing on this, but we need the BA. Uh, actually, we discussed that it's not good to return to the BA column. They put as a blocker BA or mark it that it needs more BA uh, here. And this is the policy that uh, at the end, in the last column, you can put one over the another. So step by step, the Kanban team resolves the problem one by one depending on what, how important are they for the team. Uh, not only the team abandoned the Excel sheets, but nowadays when they have to report to the client, one person is staying in front of the board, and the other person is writing the uh, status email to the client, and he said, this feature is here. We will do it in whatever time. This feature is here. We will do it on that time. So the Kanban board became a social place, a social place where you do your work. Now it was the primary source of information. It was not the system. It was the Kanban board that was dealing with this. Uh, you recognize a team that is doing uh, good agile or good Kanban, when you see the board is changing and improving. Some other policies came later. These were the policies related to uh, these are test environments, and they synchronize how they uh, test features and so on. So this was the experience. Now we are on the Enterprise Agility Conference. It was not enterprise solution of Kanban. It was a very team-oriented solution. And where is the team on Kanban maturity model? It's what maturity level is the team level? It's level one, or maybe two. But this team was uh, very successful. They were very satisfied. The company was satisfied. The IT department was satisfied because the communication and cooperation improved, that it became a, a role model for the organization. And now two other applications of Kanban are coming. So Kanban is a kind of virus that is in the company, and now it's spreading all around the company. As soon as we have a critical mass of Kanban teams, we can scale up on, a, on an enterprise level. So uh, when I wrote the title, Solving Dependencies, because actually the problem was not the communication between the departments. They were fine. Both departments and their key experts were really good professionals. The problem was the dependencies, that they were not resolved in the right time. So I wrote this uh, title. It's misleading, because it's six times from introduction of the, of the Excel, Excel backlog until I did this assessment. At that time, I, participated, I joined the group that was discussing the Kanban maturity model. And uh, I was inspired by the model. And we, I really decided to measure it at the end. Of course, unfortunately, I did not measure it at the beginning, but I'm quite sure it was zero. Uh, and you see, this team, in three, four months, achieved maturity level one. 
and went to maturity level two. So it was a big success. Normally, I do not see teams uh, doing so fast. But here there were a number of reasons. First, values. The team was prepared. Second, they had a real business problem to solve. Uh, so reference to Kanban maturity model, how we used the model, or how I used the model working with the team, it was a reference book. You can find a lot of good practices in the model. The most important thing is to use them in the right time, in the right place, and they to solve a real problem of the team. I come from uh, another maturity model, that is capability maturity model integration. I mean, 15 years ago, I started with this. And the problem there, it was a very good model. It's still a very good model. The problem there was that companies were targeting maturity level instead of uh, solving their problems. And I hope it would not happen with the Kanban maturity level uh, model. That your objective will not be, we need to go to maturity level three. That's not a business objective. It's a vanity metric. We don't like to measure our maturity level. We want to measure our business, our profit, and how, uh, how efficient we are. So the results, of course, we improve the cooperation. As a matter of fact, to this service I committed in a term of fixed price contract. I didn't have mandates in the contract. The idea was that we, we will find a way, it was not Kanban at that moment, we will find a way, it, or it was not explicitly Kanban, to uh, improve the cooperation between the departments. But what else we achieved was a smooth workflow, so Mm, we didn't have the metrics, but the clients were very satisfied by the uh, customer uh, delivery time, by telling in uh, Kanban terms it's uh, uh, lead time, customer lead time. We see that cross-functional teams uh, were created. Actually, uh, this team nowadays is a team at the beginning, formally, it was not a team. These were people from BA department, development specialists from BA department, uh, uh, development department, test department, working together. But the board collected all of them in one, uh, around the board. So nowadays, it's a team. Uh, I think it's formally a team. I have to check. Uh, and. Uh, it happens that some guys that were specialized in, uh, in uh, backend, now they, they take some front-end tasks because they see on the board that those tasks need to be done and they really cooperate with each other. It was not an objective, but it was a very good result. result so the, 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 the narrow specialization of the people in the team changed to good because Nowadays, uh, they, they are able to help each other. It's a role model in the organization. They are known as a very productive team within the organization. And uh, it was easier to start with other teams because they have already seen it was working. And here, I want to, I extracted a quote from the Accession Cabal Condensed. And I can tell you that this story, this case study, it will be published as a case study soon, uh, really prove it from the practice. And it says, once we achieve this understanding of the work we do, we can start to improve. We can become more predictable and work at a more sustainable pace. Communication and collaboration goes up. Actually, I saw this quote after the service, but in this specific case, it, uh, it served the, uh, the purpose. Uh, another good outcome of this was we are, were working in parallel with the Kanban maturity model. 
that uh, if I create a map where we started and when we went, actually we followed quite well the, the, the levels, maturity level zero, visual wise, maturity uh, level one, go on the team level, and then uh, start interconnecting with other, uh, other uh, teams in the organization. So for me, it was a very good proof uh, of the uh, main idea behind the Kanban maturity model. And uh, as a lesson learned for me, next time I really would start with some uh, more formalized Kanban training. And I would start with explaining to the team the, and to the organization the logic behind the Kanban mo maturity model. Difficulties? Lack of enough stress for using Kanban metrics on team level. The team achieved the objectives. They're on the plateau. They're satisfied by their board. Using metrics in a physical board is not an easy task <laughs> at all. I have heard that some teams are able to do this, but I have not seen it. So I think the stress, you remember David Anderson uh, was talking about uh, stress, refle stressor, reflection, and leadership. So the stress would come that the team nowadays uh, is expanding in other countries. And uh, it will happen that the electronic Kanban tool will be a must. I hope they will choose the right tool. <laughs> so it will be easier for us to, uh, to work with it. Uh, so uh, once you have a success and most successful team in the organization, you need this stress, either by another team that is more successful or by some other uh, mm, sources. So that was the case I wanted to present you. It's a very practical one, and it's a really real case to solve a business problem using Kanban and indirectly Kanban maturity model. I want to, tell, uh, to thank to the team, Tim was, uh, how to say, very innovative in their Kanban implementation. I want to take, thank to Radustin, who is the CTO of the company and the sponsor of the initiative, and the team lead, Georgi. Uh, and Georgi now is uh, promoted on a high level in the organization. And uh, uh, what I have seen here is that when he exited the team, uh, it was very natural uh, kind of uh, another person to take the leadership. There was not any stress because this was a self-organized team and the leader emerged in the team in a natural way. So thank you.